out of it a little bit where it's it's safer. And then you can make sure. I've seen people destroy flower beds with it. You can buy it. You can buy it by the bag at uh, Ace. They usually have a few laid off the side. How's it going, guys? Matt here with Carolina Coops. Welcome to Video Chicken. Uh, to my left is my host, Kristen Warren. I think this one really could be a male. Oh, we got one that's hatching? This show is for you guys. This is the bass fiber. Y'all know chickens are the gateway drug into homesteading. We survived with only one trip to the ER. Coyotes are everywhere. It's about time you show up, Matt. Uh -huh. Is a great straw. It is time finally for chicken police. They defecate every 12 seconds. Is that true? <laughs> now it is officially noon because the buzzer went off. <laughs> well, I've never counted. <laughs> Long more road. Coops. That's a good one with a with a court and everything. And more chickens. You're, well, the math you do now, Daddy, is chicken math. <laughs> Calm like, down, Matt. But... Calm down. <laughs> What's going on guys? Matt here with Carolina Coops coming to you live from Franklinton, North Carolina. Or Creedmoor. Or Creedmoor. I was told to say Creedmoor. It's technically Franklinton, but who cares? We are live. It is Friday. We are in North Carolina. It is freezing today. This show almost didn't happen, but it's not raining. So that's the most important part. To my left, co-host Kristen, our chicken nista, chicken all. expert, sales person that I'm sure a lot of you guys have talked to. Uh, today is going to be an awesome, awesome show. So we're going to give, you know, as always, a couple minutes for everyone to come in. Um, we are on site for the first time. That's right. Uh, it was a well stressful morning for me, but my team uh, pulled it off for me. So I can't thank you guys enough. We got all the gear set up. Uh, just as always, do me a favor. Make sure we sound good. Make sure you hear us loud and clear. Um, all, all that good stuff. Plus, we're using the customer's internet, and it looked like it passed the test. Good. But now we're going to find out for sure. We and got... we also have a studio audience. I know. We have a studio <laughs> audience. Um, so we'll get into all that. But there's, there's so many great things about today's show. Uh, but spectators. Always... Yeah, spectators. So remember, today um, we're on site. And we're going to show you guys this beautiful American coop that's behind us. And the best part's going to be. Chicken poop. <laughs> Two years worth of chicken poo in the deep litter system. And if you're not sure what the deep litter system is, trust me, we're going to talk about that a lot today. The reason for today's show is to show you guys probably, I mean, it's almost impossible to pick out the best part of a Carolina coop or American coop or whatever. Um, but I have to say one of the things that people absolutely love is the deep litter system. Me too. And so we're going to show you guys that today. So it looks like people are coming in. Make sure we sound good. Um, you might be surprised, but some people call to order their chicken coop. And I say, well, would you like some hemp for the deep litter? And they say, deep litter? What's that? They're not buying the coop for the deep litter. So then I get the opportunity to tell them all about it. That still happens. Yeah. That used to happen mm -hmm. a lot when I was selling the coops. Um, oh, what I was going to say, but the most important part is we do this show for you guys. Uh, it is paid by Carolina Coops. So thank you, Carolina Coops, to bring this show to you live and answer any questions you guys have. And another reminder, right on the other side of the camera, you know, I'm going to grab it real quick, just so you guys believe me. Here it is. It traveled with us. If you don't know yet, this is the Golden Bell. If someone gives us a phenomenal question or a phenomenal it's all about contribution contribution contribute to the show a comment a question i tell you there's times in previous shows where i'm like holy cow that's a good point even with a question i was like that's a good point you could get the golden bell which means you get a free shirt mm -hmm. isn't that pretty cool yes so please if you have questions comments leave them down in there if you don't have any questions as an employee we have to wait 90 days before we get a shirt. that is true that is true. Um, so leave your questions and comments down there. And if you don't have any, just let us know. Give us a wave and let us know where you're watching from. We got somebody watching from Kansas City, Missouri, Roblox Master 5000. Kansas City, Missouri. Awesome. All right. Um, yeah, so that if you're not if you don't know that voice, that is Megan. She is behind. I know you got to get rid of what you're going to fidget with. Uh, there it goes. Um, 
So Megan's gonna be chiming in. She's our new assistant in the North Carolina shop. And also we got Ingrid behind the computer as always, who's freezing today. Uh, it was supposed to be a little bit warmer, but again, it's not raining. All right, so should we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's go. All right, here it is. This is a chicken coop that has been here a little over two years. Right, Jimmy? Yep. Two years. And we're at the back of the coop. Now this coop is six foot wide, it's 18 foot long, and the hen house is four by six. So this is our most common standard size chicken coop. And you're, it's so important that you remember those numbers. We're gonna explain it when it comes to the deep litter system. Now, one of my favorite parts of, that makes a deep litter system possible is at the back of the hen house, look it. I'm not, you know, well, actually I have my tape measure. You know, we get asked all the time. A so the, tape measure. Yeah, the bottom of the hen house is two feet. And you're gonna notice through this whole process, I don't have to bend over at all, okay? Especially today, because my back is killing me. I might yelp a little bit. Um, there's gonna be no bending over. Also, were you about to open this up? I, I was, yeah. Check out the carabiner. We're always talking about carabiners. Get a shot of that right there. Extra security. Uh, extra security, because you gotta be mindful. Every night, predators are trying to get into this coop. And these gate latches are great, because they're just that simple. But adding a carabiner, a padlock, putting it right through that hole, we boom. Got, we got people in North Wales, and we got people watching in Zambia. So Zambia? We, yeah. Isn't that Africa? Yeah. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Love you guys. Thank Look you so that. much. All right. Um, are we ready to open this? Let's go. Now, before we open it, two years of chicken droppings. If you guys are out there watching right now and you think we're crazy, let us know. Do you smell anything right now? No. And I'm wondering if my nose even works anymore. Do you like, guys smell anything back nothing. there? Nothing. All right, now, Jimmy, our customer of this fine coop, has his neighbors over. And a thing I want to mention already, here comes another neighbor. Welcome to the party. Come on in. Um, we're going to, at the end of the show, as long as we don't run out of time, we're going to talk about what to do with the deep litter when it comes oh, to gardening. No, we're going to definitely touch on that. Okay. Um, even right. if I have to speed things along. So a lot of people are like, oh, God, chickens, they're going to stink, right? How many times do they tell you that? When oh, I've heard it. They don't stink, folks. If you're on the fence thinking about getting chickens, trust me, they don't stink if you got the right setup. And again, I don't smell a thing. Right. So are we ready to open it up? Let's go. Well, hold on a minute. Actually, I just want to point out one more quick thing. What? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so look at these big back hen house doors and what this does is it I haven't looked in it yet, just so you guys know. Um, you never think you'd be so happy to see chicken poop, do you? Oh, well. <laughs> we just removed an entire wall. We just gave ourselves full access to the back of the hen house, and I still haven't had to bend over, have I? I'm surprised these rope bars are so clean. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I got to clean my rope wrap roost bars. No, you yeah, shouldn't have to clean. Jimmy, have you ever cleaned them? We're going to bring Jimmy in here in a little bit. Um, but this is amazing. Have you ever had to clean your roost bars? You shouldn't have to clean your roost bars, folks. Okay. If you got to clean your roost bars, you got too many chickens in your house. But if you do, you can just pop them out of the sockets, huh? That is true. We got to make everyone happy. We make it so that they pop out real easy. Now, we have not let the girls out yet. Uh, I thought it'd be kind of funny. They're probably going to spot and out. They normally do free range, so they're like, they're hey, ready. get me out of here. One of the neighbors brought grapes. She goes, I can't wait to... So they go on vacation again because I get the eggs when I come check out the chickens, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's what Connie said back there. Okay. Um, what's your first impression here? I see poop and feathers and help. Two years of chicken tribes. Now, I'm going to get behind the camera. I'm going to try to get a zoom and in. And it's pretty full. It is full. Would you how, say this how, is how, what, This is 12 your, inches deep. Okay. Would you so say... This is 12 inches? That's 12 okay. inches. Oh, we got another neighbor coming. So I would say this. We are going to have a live audience today. <laughs> that's 10 inches of poop and hemp? Correct. Um, that's the other important thing is uh, the customer here has been using industrial hemp. Now, truth be told, ready for a disclaimer? We were out of hemp, out of our beautiful, mm -hmm. blonde colored, right from France, industrial hemp, the world's best chicken bedding. So he had to go buy the competitors, which is not nearly as good. But truth be told, you know, I know we get into splitting hairs and that kind of drives me nuts. Um, it still did a great job. And it's not blonde anymore. <laughs> it definitely is not blonde <laughs> anymore, uh, which reminds me, you brought some stuff for show and tell I today. Did. Yeah. Um, once we're done cleaning this out today, we will be putting in um probably two bales of hemp all right does that sound right or we're gonna just do one and then let them let's see let's see okay um all right so i'm gonna zoom in on this and we're gonna bring jimmy in here a little bit because i would like jimmy to talk about it so you guys can hear it directly from a customer mm -hmm. 
All right, so let's see. All right, do we want to drop the door? You want to drop down the deep litter door? Here, let me get a shot. Let me get a shot. It may not be, it might be too dark in there. We got to get some lights in there. We didn't bring the studio lights. All right, so there's the deep litter. Hopefully you guys got a good shot of that. We ready to drop down the door? Look at that. Whoa, wow. look, look at, at that. that. Is... <laughs> wow. It's like a geological timeline. <laughs> No, really. I know. It that, is. That stuff on the bottom. That is unbelievable. <laughs> now, again, I know I, I'm going to bring Jimmy in. Actually, you know what, Jimmy? Are you ready? Let's let's get Jimmy's mic on. Jimmy, come on in. And I agreed to step out of the shot. And this is Kristen's favorite thing. Um, before we go into cleaning any of this, I want to talk about this because we don't get this shot very often, do we? No. Okay, Ingrid's giving me sign language, so we're gonna. You're cutting off Jimmy's. Head. And we're cutting off Jimmy. All right, Jimmy. Actually, can we get a picture? Yeah, Before we got to get pictures it. of this. I feel like we just made a huge discovery. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Well, Do you remember this day? I feel like an archaeologist. <laughs> so yeah, that that door yeah, hasn't closer. been opened in two years. So that is amazing. Try, turn it this way. Yeah. Well, no, she's going vertical. Okay. Not yet. No, turn. It. Here, I'll get the pictures. Okay. <laughs> I got it. Uh, well, we're gonna talk about that, and that is actually cool. a great question. Um, so let's get some shot here. Let's. I didn't realize it was going to be this. <laughs> it was nice. going to be this exciting. Wow! Hold on. Here, back, back up. Back up. Back up. Um, this is right, Ingrid, my yes. marketing genius. Yeah, I this love that. is it's amazing. Honestly, I had no idea it was going to look this good. What do you think, Jimmy? I think it's cool. The biggest plus is that it doesn't stink. I mean. All right. So it's just confirmation. All right. <laughs> so Jimmy, did you turn that at all? I turned it and added, so we started with two 40-pound uh, bales and then just added periodically and occasionally I would rake it and turn it, but it's been quite a while since I've done that, so right. um, I just kind of let it do its thing. Yeah, this that's a lot right there. So Yeah, can... somebody likes to sleep over there. <laughs> yeah, they all, they all fight over this spot. I don't know why, so. That's but, the popular corner. Yeah, I'm a... Uh, I'm excited to get some new stuff in there and look at here she goes. Yeah, I mean, like, really, I just want to show that it's just so dry. It's just like completely dry. Yeah, I don't, I don't really see any moisture. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe. And actually, a little bit of moisture is good. good yeah, believe yeah. it or not. Well, there's moisture in the droppings, but it, 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 de it's desiccated, right? So, Does Tonya. It? Tanya from Sheridan, Wyoming, who's a fig fan. She said, it's snow and cold and no wind. My deep litter is awesome. I never would have had it without watching you over the years. We love your videos. Keep them coming. What was the name? Tanya. Tanya. Thank you, Tanya. Oh, and I'll bring in my show and tell. This is from the coop that you dropped off at my house. So this is deep litter that's four years old. Oh, my God. So it's, you can see, you can it's see just, how it just keeps on breaking It's pretty down. much just dirt. I mean, there's a feather in there, but it's... And to that point, you always say and that... it doesn't smell. You're... No? No? You're, you're cra you just get a little too into it, which is, I guess, great. Um, all right, we're going to bring Jimmy back in here in a little bit, but I'll be honest with you. I had no idea it was going to be this exciting. What does our studio audience think back there? Would you imagine... Hey, yay! Hey. Would you imagine two years of chicken crap would be this beautiful? All right. And then we would have a whole studio here to capture it. <laughs> exactly. So two years of chicken trappies. Now, Jimmy, actually, come come back in. I'm gonna have you guys still talk. But I got some questions. I'm gonna be like the interviewer here. Uh, so, Jimmy, what? How often? What is the maintenance? What is? Um, how often would you say you've had to come out here and tend to the hen house chores, if you will? Primarily, the only reason we come out to the hen house is to gather eggs. Um, this is like I was telling Ingrid, maybe stirred it, added a bale over a period of two years, probably turned it and, and uh, tilled it up once or twice. Okay, hold on. So that's a great question. How many bales of hemp you got in here right now? There's three. That's it. I'm surprised there's three. I know. Three. Okay, let's do the math right there. Now, right. I don't know how much you paid for those bales. I don't want to know. All right. Well, if you Does got it, them from the competitor, they It don't matter. Pounds. That don't... All right, so 33... Okay, 33 pounds, three bales of hemp in two years. Something I tell people all the time is the beauty of hemp, yes, it's going to cost a little bit more up front. But if you value your time, which most people do, you just saved a bunch of time. Also... That, that was... 
That's can I why. Get a, can I get a guinea pig? Have you guys ever seen a deep litter? Anyone want to be on camera real quick and do a sniff test and just turn and say, you know what? Do I have anyone? <laughs> no. I just, it, it's a, all right, I knew, I saw his smile. Um, we're going to bring someone in on the spot. I had no idea I was going to do this. Come on in, sir. What is your name? Dave. Dave, come on in, Dave. I want you to stick your head in there, okay? I want you to stick your head in there, excuse me, and tell me, do you think that's what two years of chicken? Oh, he got close. Oh, man, he's doing, he's doing us a happy right here. There's some fresh stuff on top. It, it just smells like. Earthy? It, yeah. Like a compost? It doesn't smell like chicken manure. It smells like dirt. We bought chicken manure in a bag, and you couldn't keep it in the garage. It smelled so bad. Oh. But this interesting. doesn't smell. That's an interesting point. Thank you. All right. So there's someone Thank that we you. just put oh. you know, around for day. Oh. I mean, he wait, got wait, right wait, in wait, there. Wait, 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 wait. I I think you get a t-shirt. Okay, you know what? Yeah, I think that man deserves a t-shirt. I, I would agree with that. All right. Um, so three bales of hemp. So we need to make sure we do the math, all right, that two years. Now, we get asked all the time, how often are you going to have to come out and add the hemp? Would you say, like, you added it a, a couple inches, once a month, every other month, quarterly? That's a good question. I, I think what we did was after the first two bales became super saturated like this i just came out here and maybe it was the wrong thing to do i don't know but gave it a whole another third bale and kind of tilled that third one i think i see i think i see <laughs> like the third bale was like right here <laughs> i and would the agree first bale, they were they were a little bit uh eager in the beginning and you can see where the bale was added I, I was going to say and that. And then about here, they got lazy. I have never I, seen this was so probably many the grown well, up no, so that, excited. No, that's where food. Matt told me to leave the crust on the top. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. The top crust. Um, it, that is just, it's just amazing. Um, so, I mean, can we put a time to it? Like, how much time do you think you spent dealing with the chicken manure in two years? Like, a total of 60 minutes, uh, if that? Maybe. Uh, yeah, an hour tops. An hour tops in two years. Versus so many people with the traditional type chicken coop are cleaning out their coop probably for an hour every week. Yeah. yeah. So for me, it was worth the investment. It's, it was a no brainer. So awesome. I think there, plus, there's a lot of leeway in how much you want to manage it. Like you could turn it every month or you could turn it once every six months. And any of those is right. I mean, there's no right way. Well, so hold on. That's an interesting point. I know. We're trying to all get in here in this shot. Actually, there, and there's plenty of room here. Okay. That's an interesting point is it is kind of a set and forget a system. You can't mm -hmm. really screw it up. And I do love that a lot of our listeners, viewers, customers, they want to get technical. And I love technical. Mm -hmm. Well, they want to do it right. They want to do it right. But the, the beauty of it is I think we have freedom of getting technical because you can't really screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. Matt, uh, we have questions. Yes. Far away. I love questions. Okay. So. We have this. Um, just see. Have you ever had a problem of rodents making nests in the deep litter? Do rodents yep. run at when the chickens are out free raging during the day? I want to do deep litter, but I don't want to raise a mouse hotel. No, I would say the only the only thing that has tried it that I've seen to infiltrate this coop was a snake. But um, no, no rodents. I would think that the chickens would deter the rodents. So. Yeah. They do, and mice, you got to remember, and I, I always try to not go back to I was an exterminator, but um, we do. mice, <laughs> especially house mice, want to nest where it's warm, and they don't want disturbance. They need to be very peaceful, and not to mention, I don't know if we ever got it on video. We got a video of chickens eating snakes. Um, a chicken could eat a, at least it's definitely a juvenile mouse. I've they, seen them eat a mouse. Yeah, I, yeah mine have. They don't want to be in here. <laughs> Um, and I tell you, when it comes to pests in general, always talking about it's about prevention. This will not make mice or rats want to nest in there. So, great question. The other question he had was, or she had, how many chickens have been using this coop in the past two years? So, that was, I wanted to end question. on that. And that is a oh. very important question before we start cleaning it out. Because that's what I want to also make sure everyone takes away from this. Is, you can screw this up by breaking really the biggest rule to chicken keeping is having too many chickens for your coop size all right this is a diaper at the end of the day that's all this is and you got to have the right size diaper for the right size baby right now how many so to answer the question how many chickens do you have well nine nine okay and i know you've lost a couple you had a fox during the daytime or was it a hawk no it was a fox it was during the day 
Yeah, which so is... So now, now we're down to eight, but that that occurred probably a month ago. Yeah, so it was recent. This is the result of nine chickens. Nine chickens. All right. So the reason why I want to make sure everyone understands that point is it's just worked out in Carolina Coop's math that with a four by six hen house and having going by the one foot rule on the roost bar that it's perfect so that you don't mistakenly overload the diaper. Are you listening, Jimmy? Yeah. Because <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy said he wanted to get like, I six want more. more. So chicken math is real. <laughs> and to be fair, we got a lot of customers and I know say it again, Matt, you got to stop saying that. I got 18 chickens in my four by six and they do great. Oh, well, bantams don't count. <laughs> they do not. Right? We got to make that t-shirt, bantams don't count. So I just, I want to make sure I emphasize to people, it's so important whether you're going to buy a coop from us or you're building your own, which I always tell people, learn from us. I'm not telling you to call and ask for a recipe, but what I'm saying is these are things that are very important. Don't build a coop too small for the number of chickens you want to end up with. And you also got to make sure there's room inside your hen house for your flock to fluctuate, which we've always talked about that in other shows. Um, so very, very important. And the other thing I wanted to mention too, and this is important when it comes to the deep litter system, because we do have a large nitrogen load in here and you can see all your windows are shut right now. And this has a lot to do with how warm it can get in the summer and that we always got to pay attention to keeping the chickens cool. So many people focus on keeping the chickens warm in the wintertime. That's, you don't need to do that. Um, but you have so much ventilation ability by opening up the ventilation on all four sides and the exhaust right out through the ridge cap. And I would have to say that has a lot to do, especially in the summertime, allowing the deep litter system to benefit the human because of the sensitive respiratory to the chicken. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? Is, again, it's just a part of our design so that you can't screw it up, all right? Okay, We're gonna right. are we gonna clean this out? Are you ready to are get going? Are we gonna use tools or our hands? Uh, <laughs> huh? Are you nuts? All right, Jimmy, thank you so yep. much. Um, all right, so we're we at got, 1221, we're doing great. Hold on, hold on, yeah, yeah, I yeah, bet you got, will. We got some more questions. Well, we got some questions. Comments. All right, what are some yeah, questions yeah. before we so, dive in? So Neville in, in Zambia said, what other material can be used for the deep litter system? Because you can't really get hemp in Zambia. Yes, you can. Well, he's Well, if Nan's on the mic right now, which she's not, she's back at the office, unfortunately. We really wanted her to come out. What other things can people use? So here's gonna be the answer in general. And again, I'm not a gardener. I still don't consider myself a compost expert by any means. Hold on. <laughs> She's so excited. Hold the phone, Kristen. Um, you know, it was, it was fascinating when I was out at Epic Garden out in San Diego, and they talked a lot about gardening. You're like a little kid in the candy <laughs> store. Um, green and browns, right? right? You guys are gardeners, so you're going to yeah. understand. What, they talked a lot about your greens and your brown ratio. And I always refer to it as carbon and nitrogen, your CNN. So I would have to say anywhere on this planet, there's got to be plenty of carbon, either wood chips. Right. Okay. It's just dry organic material. Exactly. Yeah. It's really that simple. We just love the hemp because it just does such a great job and it's very sustainable. It's a plant that's harvested in 90 days. It's a byproduct if you um, from the textile and I want to say even the CBD market that this was normally considered yeah. garbage waste, and now we're realizing it's great for bedding. All right. We also have um, John, um, who said, this is crazy. I've been using two bales of hemp every week, cleaning oh. once a week, and it's a lot of work, a lot of bending over. Having over 20 chickens, this is a complete game changer. Thank you. Yeah, his name was John? Yeah. Yes, John, that's what I want to teach you guys. Yeah. You hear it? Hot. Predators. <laughs> um, so, that's why we do the show. Yeah. I want people, especially... That's almost a waste of hemp. Like, it if is you're going to clean it out that much, you don't even need to use hemp. Yeah. That is a good point. Exactly. Complete yeah. waste of and hemp. And that, that's really why I don't use it for chicks. Because you clean out the chick yeah. brooder more often than... Yeah, I can, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, I don't even waste it on the chicks. And that's why we want to do this show. We want to prove to you guys with the right setup. And this is why we do what we do with our coops. All our coops. Not just the American. All the way from our Cali coop. You're just dying. Our Cali coop to our custom coops, all with the deep litter system. All right, I'm gonna uh, go. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We can go through these, some of these comments while you guys want to yeah. start. All right, cleaning. well, let's talk about, about this. Work and talk at the same we, time. I work and talk like a master. Are you pointing at me? I just did. Now, hold <laughs> on, now, we want to show people, and we're live. 
We're live, right? In case you're just joining us. And we're about to clean out two years worth of chicken droppings. We just brought in an innocent bystander. like, oh, God, next thing I know, I'm smelling chicken poop. It did a great job. Got right he in got there. got nose, nose in. Now, yeah. there's going to be questions. So I want to show you how easy it is. And I did want to do a time lapse, but we're not going to be able to do a time lapse because it won't be real. Uh, we're using the customer's wheelbarrow, which we're going to talk about that too here in a little bit. Before you get digging, going crazy, um, how easy it is to clean and how long it takes. And then we're going to take the wheelbarrow and dump it over near the garden. We may pan the camera that's over. It's a great garden. It is. A, a, yes, I, and I love his sign, Damn It Grow. I think that's awesome. we got to get a B-roll shot of that. Um, how important this is to not just finish here but take it to your garden and use it for a benefit and we're going to talk a little bit you blew my mind yesterday mm -hmm. jimmy the customer says well do you want me to till it up or do you want me to till it in and you go no tilling and i think even ingrid and some other customers said no you don't till yeah did you guys know that you're not supposed to till anymore so i want to talk about that towards the end of the show all right so we're going to go ahead and start cleaning how many wheelbarrows do you think it's going to take to clean this out four Four. Do you have a cubic yardage? What do you think? This is like a half a yard wheelbarrow, something like that. I'm just kind of pulling that one out. Um, all right, so we're going to start cleaning this. So now, look at our devices. Okay. We got a rock rake. I have a hoe. And a hoe. Now, I <laughs> wish I would have thought of this. <laughs> um, I have a hoe. A customer years ago in Raleigh, North Carolina, I never forget this, <clears throat> a coupe hack. She had a rock rake. And I, I'm going to say it's not necessary, but I always remembered. I thought it was very interesting. She took quarter inch hardware cloth and wrapped the fingers of her rock rig, remember it now, around the fingers so it was like a giant hoe. I don't know, I just always <laughs> thought that was cool. <laughs> I don't know why Megan's laughing. Um, so I just thought that was a pretty interesting point. All right, so now we're going to go in here, we're going to clean this out, right? Right. Hold on. Pulling, sweeping motion. And we're going to show everyone how I easy just, it is. I, I want to I well, chip, chip this. Like. Hold, hold on. So look, look what we've done. I want to look at this is layers. all deliberate we got it two feet up in the air for many reasons one i don't want to bend over it's great for the chickens underneath and most wheelbarrows are going to be about this tall this and is it is fantastic isn't it now before we begin there's one last thing is this ready to be done i would say so you don't think he can go longer he's no, got he, another he two probably, inches oh he could probably go that's down. the other point so yeah. two years nine chickens you're seeing it right here i, I, I only say that because of how far up it's gone yeah, you can see he got very, just like you said earlier. <laughs> um, but it's just, this is the beauty of the deep litter. And it really proves a point you say a lot, is that technically they should never have to clean it because it's almost like the tide of the ocean. It might build up some droppings and let the microbes do their job and break it back down to soil like you brought for show and tell. Yeah. Did you do that when you were in school as a little girl? No. Looking, okay, just want to be sure. Are we ready to start cleaning? Yes. Any questions? So. Well, they have a couple comments. So Maria um, Brock Benson said she loves her deep litter and she does rake it a couple times a week just so the girls aren't stepping in the poop and bringing it into the nest box, which... Uh, yeah, that which, is a good point. You know, which you I know, do if, as well. Whoever sleeps over here is uh, sleeping right in front of the nest boxes. Right. So, so that, is, that is a good point. Uh, somebody else is wondering if... Um, the that is so dry. clean out can go straight to the compost pile or Gosh. is it going to be too hot and need to sit first it's not going to be hot um maybe that, the top layer not eat no the, when we did the show three four weeks ago we had that deep litter expert compost expert yeah he made a great point what did he say I need to rewatch that because I was writing down so many. I was learning he made because so we that. talked a lot about our deep litter system and composting in general that if it's not over three foot deep it will not allow the microbe species to thrive that produces the heat if i remember correctly he said with it only 12 inches deep it won't allow the microbes to get hot i think what they're talking about is if it's too much of oh. um the the stuff in the chicken poop. the nitrogen is like you it's can't too, it, it's the too fertilizer is too hot not like temperature but right it might burn your oh, plants no, well, because oh, of the okay. i thought maybe the question was is this going to produce too many heat too much heat no 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 they're no. talking about is it's all is right it, is it well, burn what your, do i know it's going to burn your plants if you use it straight away oh i'm sorry uh it well what is the answer then sorry <laughs> i would say I honestly think the bottom part could be used because that's already composted really well. But it wouldn't hurt to let it sit for for a couple of weeks to a couple of months. And I would agree with that. Now, yeah. he, here's a thing that... So this is a perfect time of year because it could, it could go straight on the garden right now because here we don't plant outside until April. 
Right. Now, before I forget, too, um, a, a, a friend of mine who's a horticulturalist uh, up in Corning, New York, she made mention years ago when I talked to her about this. She said, you know what she would do, if it was her coop, is take that top layer off you call the crust. Mm -hmm. Throw that off to the side, okay, and then clean out the rest of the deep litter. Go dump that into your compost. Bring your crust back in, and it's like kick-starting it. I wouldn't bring the crust back. I'd bring some of this that's decomposed some. What no, are you thinking, Greg? Again, I don't think you can go wrong. I mean, the I crust guess, is fresh. Yeah. I, I mean, you're going to get that tomorrow, but I would get some of the stuff that's been... Yeah, I don't think you sitting. have to do that. You can. It's kind of like the starter in a sourdough. Yeah. Guess, you know, <laughs> yeah. or, or a, a, a scoby in a kombucha, whatever. But it, you don't you don't have to. Um, I would leave the bottom. I just I'm just layer. looking at that stuff on the bottom. It All right. So, so we're at 1230. Good. We broke into it. We've cleaned. Yeah, I would this, say one yeah, sixth. This if is I will. really, really dry. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, I feel um, like you can just put that back in. So yeah, hopefully right here, we, could, we could reuse this. You, yeah. you absolutely could. Um, all right, so now, Kristen, do you want to do the honors? Look, my hand's clean. Do you want to do the honors moving the wheelbarrow, or you want me to do it? Uh, that looks like hard work. You do it. No, I think you got <laughs> it, because I want to see. We're going to practice panning with the camera. Oh, okay, okay. And so there's the wheelbarrow. <laughs> oh, there's a rock there, Kristen. God, I wish I would have got that on camera. All right, so I have an idea. Oh, you heard it. Uh, well, no, no, no. Yeah, Jimmy's like, oh boy. Okay, now nah, you guys are cut off. Good thing we didn't start drinking already. Uh, we'll move. Uh, a, okay. So what I was gonna so you do it here? is just she's gonna go over to the garden, and we're just gonna dump it, just like that. Eighty-four viewers right now. Yay! Yay! See if we can break hundred today. Are you guys entertained? Was this worth it? This was a lot of work coming out here. Yeah, it was much easier to get over that bump. I hope. Uh, here, I'm gonna get a shot. There yeah, it is. When it was empty. That's two years inside your hen house. What a time saver. No smell. And not only do the neighbors love it, they're here to watch right now. <laughs> True story. Or did you say there was a happy hour later? All right. How'd what you if get we, them over here? <laughs> should we keep lifting over this or should we just move a, a stone? It was easy to lift from the other end. Jimmy's like, okay, now I got to redo landscaping. Yeah. Okay, now I want to talk about some of the dirty stuff. Because people are going to talk about this, and, it, and it's a legitimate question. Uh, because you do need to be mindful, okay, folks? you got to use common sense. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. The other beauty of hemp is it is very low in dust, but you're not going to... You, you do got to be smart oh, yeah, about, right. you know, your respiratory protection. Um, if you happen to have a mask lying around... I don't know. You know, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> what I can tell you is in commercial settings, which I've seen a lot of, as an exterminator, the nitrogen and the, there's so much feces, the potential chance for uh, histoplasmosis was huge. Uh, thank God I never got it. But um, right. where, are you, where are you going? Are oh, you going to do it again? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm going to see if I can make some right, more so Chris, comments. All right, yeah. So bring in some more questions and comments. We're going to have Kristen go dump that. Okay, so Laura from Oregon says she'd love one of our coops. I have hawks families that feed off of cats, squirrels, birds, rabbits, and any free-range chick in the area. Will these coops keep them out? Uh, absolutely. All the time. Um, squirrels are a, a slightly different. No, they're talking about the hawks are feeding off of all these small animals. So okay, the, okay, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, yeah, she's talking about hawks and chickens. So um, in the coop, obviously, they would be safe from hawks. Well, you got it. Okay, yeah, your your chickens, excuse me, the chickens inside the coop are 100% safe. When you do free range, which I'm a huge advocate of, it's worth the risk. Now, hold on, hold on. We'll get to the edges by moving the wheel. Oh, I saw you broke over. You, you went to the rake. I'm going to get to the hull. All right. So what are we going to do here? Are we going to keep going deeper? Okay, now I talk about this all the time. Just let you—you you don't gotta stop working. Oh, I wait, thought we wait, talked you're to. Um, uh oh, now these are not our tools. I just got a crack in this. Where Jimmy oh, goes, he's nice, like, "Oh, that was my neighbor's." Nice pile. Look at that pile of poo. Mm. Mm, yummy. Um, talk about crust. So we're we're in here, and there's the there's the ladder. Just let it disappear. It's gonna be perfectly fine. Somebody asked if this was okay for silkies. Speaking of the latter. Nothing's okay for silkies. <laughs> I got you a silky this year. You're going to keep it and you're going to love it. No. 
You're going to yeah. change your mind. I so, can't yes, stand. You can do deep litter with silkies, can't you? I can't stand silkies. Here, I got it. Okay. Oh, we got a trip hazard over here. Oh, for my YouTube chicken, please. Let's see if we get a shot of the predator apron. Keep going. Um, so, Homestead Engineering asked if we'd recommend drilling holes in the bottom for airflow. Yeah, our compost I, I expert said something about that. So you that, can't, that could be beneficial. It can. You don't have to. Yeah. I mean, we have the high density polyethylene. Do whatever you want. So you don't you don't need to. But what do you think, Matt? I was not paying attention at all, um, so I cannot answer. Do Let's, we need holes in the bottom for airflow? It we're going to experiment. Be, do I think so? No. This is this, this that still works. That reminds me of if it's not broke, don't fix it. We're going to experiment with it. Again, going back to our show four or five weeks ago with the compost expert, he said the one thing he would do is add holes to the bottom. I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if yeah. I'm digging it. Uh, I'm skeptical, but that's more of the reason why I'm going to do it. And we're going to do two coops side by side. Okay. So stay tuned next year. We'll, show, we'll tell you that answer. All right, come on, come on. Time is money. Are, are we going to finish? Cleaning it out? Oh, we got to talk about gardening. No, 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 no. We're, no, okay, let's rock this out. Let's get going here. Okay, okay. Um, all right, so now we're going to move the wheelbarrow over. I know you're oh, dying. We got a visitor coming. We're crossing streams. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? Yes. Um, Linda said, I'm going to bring her in. What, what site preparation did you do before the coop was installed? Just level dirt, wood, something else? And how is the bottom frame holding up? Yeah, I would love to take the camera and do the, just take a shot of that. I took a picture earlier of the base because a lot of customers do ask about the base. And what they did here is the ground was fairly level up here, but there's a slope going the other direction. So you can see right now, no four by four at the bottom here, but you can see two rows on the back. Apparently there is one under here before they brought more dirt in, but uh, this is a great example of a great base. And also the predator apron disappears over Hold on, here. watch out. Here we go. Let me see if I Where can you show going? you. They well, show we're you working the, now. Oh. We're working. We'll get to ah. that. Hold on. Let's get this cleaned out. Okay. Um, look at it, look at it. I just, I want to give a quick demonstration. Um, if we're if you're going to clean out your hen house and you're not doing a live show, it actually doesn't take very long. Huh? Four foot deep. Look how easy I can reach the back. Mm -hmm. yeah, God, I feel like that infomercial guy. Well, you don't have the little Billy thing Mays. On. <laughs> sham wow, sham wow, sham wow. Okay, which was uh, you did that like last week. When you I know. Built the, built the and Mackenzie said that she didn't like that. She could hear me breathing, so. Oh. Yeah, I would just take the crust off that side and we can leave the bottom layer in here. So Three Owls says Friday afternoon, we're this watching. Is, this is like new stuff right here. <laughs> that, so we have a comment from Three Owls. It says Friday afternoon, we're watching chicken poop live stream. <laughs> and Jen K just said, love watching and learning from you guys cannot wait to get my chickens within the next year or so and a coop from you guys it will be a great start to my beginning of a little farm act <laughs> that's awesome plan ahead plan ahead order ahead oh we got somebody from sweden sweden <laughs> um and they asked i wonder oh, if it generates heat during the winter um and it and then someone also asked if it was in in warmer climates did the deep litter generate too much heat i haven't it's technically it can generate heat with the right composting action but i haven't really noticed i haven't no. noticed i don't I, think it get it doesn't get hot as a matter of fact i feel like the hen house is probably the cooler spot in the in the south summers than the run or anywhere else hmm. that would make sense so wouldn't you agree matt He's uh, working. I'm working. I'm letting <laughs> you guys do your thing. I, I can just stand thought with you and could do questions. two things at once, yeah. I suppose. Well, I want people to see <laughs> on a normal situation. How much you work and how much I don't. No. Not how how easy it is. It is super quick. Super easy. Watch out. My dad's probably laughing right now. <laughs> I know he is. I can hear him laughing. <laughs> Patty S. wants to know, before putting fresh hemp back in, do you recommend spreading DE around the corners? What are you thinking, Ingrid? No. I would not use diatomaceous earth Excuse in me. the deep litter at all because it just, you want it, you want the beneficial microbes. You don't, there's, there's no need for it. Maybe, maybe the nesting boxes? 
Yeah, you if can you're put, doing a refresh there. Yeah, I would do it in the nesting boxes for sure. You can do that a little bit, but very little. Very little. But you don't need it in the... The deep litter is just... It kind of just works on its own. It's its own ecosystem, and it doesn't really need a lot of human intervention. All right, so my daughter here, which I tell you, it's just a proud father moment. She loves coming to work. You happy you're skipping school today? Yeah. Yes. All right. Show us, eight years old, and I know you're the size of a 10-year-old, but trust me, she's eight. Go ahead. She's never cleaned out a coop before, and I just want to show you. I don't want to say it's so easy an eight-year-old can do it, but it's, it's really just this easy. And what a great chore. Just don't hit the camera, baby. <laughs> um, so it, it's just, what do you think, Jetta? Can you believe that? Could you imagine if you pooped in one spot for two years, what it would be like? <laughs> <laughs> Get right in there. Let's see how easy it is here. I'll take the hoe on the side. Um, Get right in there. Huh? Is this not a great chore for children? Is this um, breaking labor laws? Well, when has that stopped you? <laughs> you want to use the hoe? Now remember to leave some in there. I know. You're saying something, and we're going to have to pause. So what do you want to do? You want to leave some in there and coat the bottom? Mm -hmm. I wanted to show everyone cleaning it out, especially once I got hammering at it. But I think they get the idea. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show it doesn't take long to clean the whole thing out. And, all right, hold on, baby. And our composting guy said to go ahead and throw a shovel of dirt in there to help right, with the here's what, here's what we're going to do. Here's what Miss Kristen would like. We can't argue. This is like police tape. You can't argue with a chicken expert. Um, let's break down some of this compost over here. We're going to spread it. All right. And is this enough? Yeah. All right. So we're, so what you're saying is don't clean the whole thing out. Leave some in there. Mm -hmm. And it's, nice... it's just going to kickstart it. Okay. I'll, I'll do that. And, what do you uh, think? A shovel, a shovel of dirt, too. What do you think? Yeah, I don't even think you need that much in there, quite uh -huh. frankly. So what are we doing? Are we still cleaning? I would take a little bit more nah, out. Did, but did you hear, did you hear Chris go, mm -hmm. she's disagreeing. Oh, no, What no. are we going to do? No, see, there's no wrong way. You can take it all out if you want. No, let, let's but... leave some in there because I'm curious. And, and look, how, look how, I mean, this stuff's, I know. It, it's got life in it. What does the customer think? What do you think? Do you want it all cleaned out, fresh start, or do you want to go with what us experts think we know everything? Well, while you're talking, <laughs> Look at the chicken. I'm treating it as like, if you have a septic, when it comes to clean your septic tank. Kristen, I think they, they're... Oh. They want out. scared it. So what, they pump out the first side of the septic tank and they leave the second side to kind of kickstart the uh, microbes, same concept, I guess. Oh, it is. It's like a septic tank. That's right. That is such a good example of what they're saying. Okay, so should we do it? Yeah. All right, so we're going to leave some in there to kickstart it. And I tell you, that does make sense. Um, this reminds me, I used to raise a lot of fish and grow coral. Starting a fresh tank, you got to wait for all the, the, the denitrification cycle to happen. Here we don't have to. So let's go ahead and do that then. All right, so... What was that? I mean, how much time did we actually spend cleaning? That's what I want to know right now. About 15 minutes. All right, That's thank all. you, baby. 15 minutes. That is unbelievable. All right, so we're going to dump this over here. And we're going to spread this out. All right, Jimmy. Jimmy's jumping right in there. We're going to do some more close-ups. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Again, if you are enjoying this, please let us know. Um, somebody was just asking how many bags of hemp in the two years, it was three. It was three, it was but, three there were, yep. 30, but there were three pound bags. There was what, one. We 40. started with two and then ended up with three over that two year progression. Yeah. They Would were, you guys I like think, to see Ingrid and Meg? No. Um, well, maybe Meg, but. Um, Let's say hi to everyone. Uh, um, he didn't use the uh, 44 the, pound bag. The let's just time. say hi to everyone. There's Ingrid, there's Mag, hard at work. Do you guys have the best job in the world? You got a great office. We have a great office. That's just the point I wanted to make. Yes, sir. It is 18 feet long. Okay, you mentioned about not overloading the coop with chickens. Yes. How many chickens would you suggest this coop can handle safely? So that's actually a great question. So if you guys couldn't hear that, the gentleman um, in our audience today just asked, how many chickens can this coop handle safely? Can I throw this in there? Um, okay, so, yeah, throw that in there. So we got some soil. We're going to add that in. Okay, to answer your question, 
And this is actually really important. I know we get this question a lot. When it comes to our coops, and when I say coop, I'm actually always referring to the overall structure. And there's two parts to our coop. There's the hen house, which is what we're cleaning out right now, and then there's the run. Now, when it comes to how many chickens should be in this coop, we have to think of a couple things, thank you. Um, if you can free range or not. So let's say you can free range like Jimmy does. That means the run size doesn't really matter. What matters is I like the one foot rule. I like a king size bed, one foot per hen on the roost bars. These are their tree branches where the chickens would go before coops were invented. So it's very, very important. And the other thing that we didn't talk a lot about, and I mean, these are just gorgeous. He's got some beautiful eggs over here. We got what we call a three gang nest box. And the rule of thumb is four to six hens per nest box. So let's go on the low side. So we say three times four, that's 12. It matches up perfectly to two six foot roost bars. So at the one foot rule, 12 chickens. Now, if you couldn't free range, when I say, I hate saying this, but I always as a disclaimer, industry standard minimum is 10 square feet per hen in the run. Nothing's better than free ranging. Now I, I suck at math. Yes. Um, they're so curious. I'm going to break out the calculator. The chickens are coming out. Uh, so six times 18, that's 108 square feet. So that'd be 10.8 chickens minimum if you couldn't free range. So hopefully that all makes sense. So with nine chickens in the coop, and that's a six foot bar, does it really need to have a second roost bar? It doesn't hurt. And there is two roost bars in there. Um, it doesn't hurt another industry standard as a disclaimer. And I know people are going to be like, no, 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 you, Matt, that's too many inches per hen. A lot of people say eight inches, eight inches per hen on the roost bar. So again, that, if we that do, would be 15. Is it 15? I always yeah, forget. Eight I, inches, it's 15. All right. So 72 times but two. Go ahead and check it. 144. So 144 inches. That makes sense. That's 12 feet. Divide by eight. 15. May I pause for a second? This is why I love that we got this on video. How many chickens is it at eight inches? Isn't it 15? 18. 18. Oh, that reminds me, last week someone Ooh. gave us the wrong number I, on the area wrong. square footage of our brooder. Oh, now we got visitors. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So the girls are coming out. Now, here's the other thing they're I want so to show you. I'm so curious. I love it. Here's what I want to show you guys. All and right. they're not eating it, they're exploring with their beaks. Um, some people might think yeah. that they're eating, but they're not. If you zoom in, it might change the lighting. I didn't know we had to put a light in there. There you go. Change, there we go. Um, folks, what you're seeing right now are some very beautiful, fluffy butts. <laughs> Why is that important? For everyone that has chickens is going to understand what I'm talking about. That's when you know you're doing things right. And it all is about the structure. Right, folks? Right. Yes, right. thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. I mean, look how beautiful your chickens are. And I know we're going to get asked, what kind of breeds do we got in there? Um, is that a light Brahma? Yep. Yeah. And a... That's a brown Leghorn. I know. A Leghorn? A Leghorn. A Leghorn. They have those at Southern States this week. <laughs> All right, so as Kristen was saying, the chickens are very curious. All right, so we're at 1247. Um, we're going to try to kill the show at the top of the hour. However, uh, we definitely want to get into the gardening part. And I know we were talking about dumping the compost, the deep litter onto the garden there? beds. Well, hold on. Um, let's, 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 uh, some chicken TV right here. So they're all coming out. Notice how they all stick together. Um, and they're on paper. Look at, look at, they're working. They're scratching, right? They're mixing <laughs> they're in mixing that soil together. right now. And people are asking if you make quail coops and rabbit hutches and uh, yes, duck yes, coops. Yes. Coops. Um, yes. There's duck nothing coops we don't boat. make. And I tell you, there is a huge future in quail. Love quail. And every and time, rabbits. Uh, blue lace red wind up, uh, um, absolutely just gorgeous. Rhode Island red, right? Two of them. Yep. Two of them. Uh, oh yeah, there is the other one. So if you know anyone, or if you are someone that has an egg allergy, supposedly you can eat quail eggs, and we need to prove that on video chicken. Well, you're gonna have somebody risk getting it. Yeah, we yes. need to uh, They're gonna sign a waiver. I've got EpiPens, you know. <sighs> Um, okay, so what are we going to do next here? Let's finish up the hen house and continue answering any questions you guys have. All right, so we just need to... There's Mackenzie watch. I hope, Mackenzie, you're doing well. We need to pull up the bottom, If right? you guys have called recently, uh, there's a good chance you probably talked to her. All right, so we're going to pull up the bottom. All right, Jetta. Oh, are we going to put the new stuff in? 
Should we finish it? Well, no, here's, here's what okay. we need to do. Here's the next step. Okay, so we've cleaned out the deep litter, two years worth of chicken droppings, and we did it in a total time of, I think it was about 15 minutes. We left a little bit in there, so it kickstarts it, all right? We, mm -hmm. What does that mean by kickstarting? Explain that. <laughs> we want the beneficial microbes that are, that are in the broken down um, deep litter, and that'll help to... <laughs> Matt Someone just, got startled. Matt just scared oh, the oh, whole no, flock. Jetta's around the other side. Um, so I was this, looking. this just helps um, to help the new stuff to break Go down. Go ahead and let them out. Uh, so we're going to let the girls out. And, and that's exactly it. It's just kickstarting it. The, the, the microbes are already there. So all I did is just clean this deep litter door threshold. All right. So we can close the door. Yeah. I thought we were going to throw them. Okay. Jimmy's still mic'd up. He's still hot. We can hear him. Come on in, Jimmy, real quick. What would you think of that? Isn't that uh, something? We Is that not worth? Jimmy. I'm good. There you are. Yeah. It was off. It was off. Okay. Oh, she took a great so diet. real quick, here is a 44-pound bale of hemp. Your back hurts. Come on. Yeah, I know. I'll live. Yeah. Um, here it is. Yes, there's a picture of a horse on it. I know some people out there are like, oh, I thought it was for chickens. It, it, it'll work for chickens. If, if, if it works for horses, it'll work for chickens. I can tell you that if you're in the horses. <laughs> um, this is it. This is a premium industrial hemp product. What are we doing? I'm talking about hemp and we're it's squirrel. Um, oh, there's chickens over here. <laughs> They're so pretty. All right, so what we're going to do real quick, and then I'll let you get back to the chickens, is we're just going to cut this open and we're going to dump a, uh, a bale of hemp in here. Okay, can we get that shot real quick? Yes. All right, awesome. Are you got a knife on you? I don't. Dave, do you have a knife? I don't want knife, blade. Cut me, oh, Mick. Oh, Dave, Dave gets Dave's... another contribution. <laughs> oh my God, he's definitely getting a t-shirt. Thank you, sir. All right. What size so t-shirt, Dave? So what we're gonna do, and I'd love to get a close-up of this, because again, people ask all the time, how many bales of hemp? So here's what you do. Four by six. Four by six hen house. Four by six hen, yeah, I never finished my statement. And that's a 44 pound Look bale. Look how beautiful and clean this hemp is. Not the other crap that you'll see people selling a lot cheaper because they don't care what goes in there. They're using a herd that's actually meant to make hempcrete. Completely different. All right, so we're going to take it. We're just going to dump it. So we had a couple of questions on Instagram. Emily Torres asked if there would be a stench if she used pine shavings and would she have to clean it more often? Pine shavings do work. It doesn't work quite as well as the hemp. Not as absorbent. But they do help. They do work. Get a, get a close-up of this. 44 pounds of hemp. What do you think of that? You don't need another bale. Mm -mm. Yeah, I Oops. thought so. I thought 44 pounds. Yeah, I thought it. it was two, to be honest with you. Here, no. let me take this from you. I start this with is, one. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? So what we're going to do, we're just going to take it and we're just going to spread it. Um, John has some fun chicken math for us. He says, chicken math, my usage, two bales a week equals 104 bales a year, $45 a bale times two, $4,700 a year, crazy. This is like $200 a year rounded up and we can apply the money to your coops. Oh, I see what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't, you don't I mean, clean it out, that's how much money you would Yeah, take. I use one bale maybe a year, so that's, what, we would sell the bales for $65? That's it. I mean, if you can pick it up. Okay. So I feel like uh, I may have had too much in there. You started out very uh, enthusiastic. Enthusiastic, as Kristen was saying. <laughs> a little, you just crank it down a little. Be a little more lazy. Sometimes <laughs> I, I, get the, I get the feeling that sometimes more is better, I guess, <laughs> and not in this case. So. Huh. That's it. Yeah, because huh. I, I would let that get good in, uh, like, at least 50% droppings. Maybe even more before I'd add more. How do we tell? How do we tell when to add? Any idea? Do anybody, well, has it, they been doing their homework? Ever, usually we say just in the sniff test, but if it doesn't ever smell, I'd go by how it looks and say it has to be at least 50% droppings before you add more. See, I always say you go by the smell. I've seen a coop full of droppings and you still have no smell. And you think about it, what is the nuisance of poo? It's the smell. If poop didn't smell so bad, can you imagine <laughs> sanitation levels lately? Um, so it's the smell for me. So I, 
I guess the point to that, and here's where I love Chris and I don't always meet eye to eye. You're not wrong either way. You can't screw it up. Yeah. So if you're really, really lazy, just leave it until you smell it. If it's bothering you and it's in your budget and you're bored and you want to go out there and add some hemp, absolutely. Yeah. Or you could just turn that, turn yeah, that every month. That's what I was going to say. I mean, yeah. there was one point where I did smell, it wasn't a crazy strong odor, but uh -huh. I just came and turned it and it dissipated. Yeah. So. That's when you add more hemp. Now we brought you two bales um, as a little thank you gift for letting us do this. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. I got a uh, free cleaning out of it. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and let's start talking about the next parts because the next thing is, Matt, what do we do with it? And we are going to talk about in next show or show coming up, put it on your gardens, but when and how. So should way? we tease that a little bit? All right, yeah. here, I'll go this way. You're the gardener. I'm going to come over this way with the camera. And so uh, yeah, as, and as you folks. Garden. I love this garden. Jimmy even did pocket hole over here. Pocket hole joinery? Yeah. Yeah, I love that thing. Ever since I built this coop, it's nothing but pocket holes on everything. So taking a, yeah, got that from Matt. Yeah, we See, love. a lot of this is, is new. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe I hit it too hard, put too much in. Uh, I still think it did a good job. It just, oh, yeah. I just don't want to, you know, if you don't need three bales, you're kind of wasting it at that yeah. point. So. so, Laura, we do ship to Oregon. We ship all over the world. Uh, so real quick, this what we really good. wanted to get into <laughs> Wow. is we've we've cleaned these out before and just and put, put it, it back, right back in, in. All right, now you, guys, you guys are still alive you're still on camera I know. focus all right hold on real all right so Kristen yes Matt. I, I called yesterday I said listen Jimmy said well do you want me to till up my gardens before you guys clean out the coop and we put the hemp on top he was originally going to till it in I would have said yeah let's till it in and you said no 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 we don't till anymore explain to us all there's no till gardening and no till farming no till agriculture where we keep the soil intact because it's actually good for erosion, prevents erosion, water retention. You have organic material in the top that you don't want to disturb. You also don't want to bring those, those weed seeds to the surface that have been there for a while. You, uh, you don't want to disturb the microbes and the beneficial living biology beneath the surface that we've just really begun to understand what's going on below the surface of the ground and if you till it you're bringing all of that to the surface and it dies so it's almost like making your soil sterile yes you're depleting the soil yeah you don't want to do i mean we we found out that the trees actually communicate underneath the ground now and they share resources through this network of like it's a fungi or or what is it ingrid do you know oh yeah it's some um, no, I don't remember what it's called. Oh, yeah, so, called, so but yeah, we had no idea all of that was going on underneath the surface. And when you, when you disturb that, you're really ruining a lot. Okay, so my mind is blown. So that's what she told me yesterday. And I'll tell you, the reason why my mind is blown is two things. For years, and if not thousands of years, we've yes, been tilling the centuries. soil. And then when you explained it to me, and I am not a gardener. But I love learning new things. I love when something is explained that it's like, oh my God, that just makes perfect sense. That just blew my mind. So again, Jimmy, we just made your life even easier. Yeah, it's I like know lazy. you got that like beautiful tiller over there, uh, right over there. I love you that, but you, you don't need it. So let's talk about Jimmy's situation. He's got these beautiful raised beds and he's got this beautiful compost now. What should he do? What is your expert opinion? Honestly, to fill those beds, I would take the hemp that you cleaned out and I would take a bunch of leaves because the leaves will break down super quick and just, just top off those beds and then leave them for about a month or two and you'll be fine. Yeah. And then when he goes to plant seeds, just put the seeds right in there. Don't. It's all about layering. And you also, and I said, what about the weeds? And you actually... I, and I just learned a fun fact about weeds recently, which I would love to talk about. Uh, but you said, no, leave the weeds. Well, a lot of, I mean, if you pull the weeds out from the root, you're actually disturbing the soil and introducing more weed seeds into the soil. That, see, that's just, it's mind blowing. Now, Jacques, the hermit farmer, um, it, it was a 
jockgardening.com or whatever. I met him out in San Diego. He did a video recently I thought was fascinating. He said, here's why I don't weed. He said, I'll occasionally pull a weed out of the ground and look at the roots. He said he can tell if he needs water or not, which has got to be really important when gardening in the Southwest. But he said he can tell by looking at the soil sticking to the roots, he doesn't need the water. But if, if it's bone dry, it's like a water meter. I don't know. I just thought that was awesome. All right. So it is almost one o'clock, top of the hour. And I would love if we have any more questions or comments, anything at all. If you guys are still hanging with us. Um, so they I, said, uh, Patty said, I thought you remember saying in the past you put a little of the used hemp in the run. So you can to throw that deep litter into, back into the run. Absolutely, you can. Um, a lot of our custom coop designs, so actually I'll just, I guess I'll come over here and join the party. Um, I, I just can't tell if I'm in the shot. Actually, I'm going to come back. chicken poop. I'm, I'm going to come over. Can you get a shot of the garden? Oh, oh you're in the garden. Okay. Um, a lot of our custom coop designs, what's happened is, you know, I talk about the domino effect of designing a chick coop. You change the roost bar, you change a window, you change the egg hutch, da, da, da. It, what's happened is Evan, you know, the genius he is, came up with the idea of putting the hen house doors and the deep litter door inside the run. So when it came time to cleaning, you didn't even have to wheelbarrow. And if you didn't want to take it to the garden, you could just broadcast that into your run area and it'll finish its final stages of breaking down and the chickens just absolutely love it. Again, you can layer it with leaves, whatever you want. Yeah. If you I, wanted to. Yeah, you love. I think it would help. Yeah, just overall. and the chickens just absolutely love it. They absolutely love it, especially. I if see you, you have leaves in there. Yeah, especially if you cannot free range. Did you put those range. in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I don't know if you can get a, a, a shot of his uh, predator apron. Yeah, they, a great example. And they also want to look at the base. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's talk about that now. I'm I am tethered. Uh, I can't. I wish I could get a you wire. You can go uh, just onto the side here, right? Yeah. Let's just see. All right. So the predator apron. It's let's, right here. Let's take a look at that. There's Kristen's uh, show and tell. You can um, barely see the predator chicken apron. Chicken poop. So, and you can barely see it. Yeah. Uh, but there I mean, it that's is. That's kind of the point that it, it does disappear. You know, it, it just. Yep. So real quick, Kristen, explain to us what the predator apron is. There might yeah, be a lot so of people. This is what we use to prevent nocturnal animals or predators from digging underneath and getting in here. He was explaining to me, and I see it down here. He's got, oh, I don't know, a good six inches or so of base going down in here. So maybe he, he didn't even need this, but we went ahead and put this on anyhow. And it, it's stapled into the base here, the, the bottom, and it goes out two feet. So the, when the predator comes to dig, it can't get in. Yeah, because what they do is they'll come to the base of your right, coop. They, they come right here. They won't come out right there right where her right foot is and it's yep. the easiest way and it does tend to disappear over time you can see how it is disappearing it just yep. gets it, it just sits on top of the soil and just, kind of sinks in. especially if you're on grass um yeah. so there's your predator apron especially for my youtube chicken police now people are talking about the base yeah because he leveled it off in the front so yeah again i was saying when we were on live on instagram I, jimmy, on? jimmy is a uh, jet engine scientist specialist engineer builder of all jet engines so he's extremely smart and i just love to say that because i tell you Can when you get we it, uh, get the camera on this side okay yes let's here we go and then dave don't forget your knife oh yeah back. dave thank you so much for the knife all right so we're going to come over here and if i lose power we will still have audio hopefully i don't lose power <laughs> And so far. Um, that's about. Yeah, we can't really see that. As it's, I'm getting there, give yeah. me a second, people. I'm one person no. with a bad back. We're getting there. <laughs> um, try not to ruin anything. I get, see, I get one chance. Oh, we got, we got the the, the patio here. I love this too. You know, if someone wanted to help with the power cord. Uh, what, what were, what was your thoughts here? I, I really like this. No, we're good. Thing. Um, we're good. Uh, so yeah, so this is amazing. Who ahead. has a front patio on the front of their chicken coop? <laughs> Jimmy does. Jimmy does. <laughs> Can you see the the um, the base? Yeah, on the we side? need to do. We should do a YouTube video pre-recorded of talking about the base. It just see, it's a question that comes up a lot. And it's really not hard, but there are certain things that you have to ask yourself before or that we have to ask before we can answer it. It's really not that easy. Mm -hmm. um, 
Well, it, it's an e it can be an easy solution, but you know, do you want to do concrete? Do you want to do pressure treated? What is your drop? Do you want wiggle room? You know, do you trust your measurements and your cuts, or do you want it flush to the inside? You know, so there's a lot of little things. When people call us for a chicken coop and they say they're going to put in their base or have us put in the base, you know, we, we talk about all those fun things. Here, while we're over here, can you show us the egg cut. Show us that, how easy it is to get to the eggs. And the most important thing also with the base is that it's level. So in this case, Jimmy had to raise up the, the front like of the coop. So. so look look at how clean those eggs are. People are like, I got, you don't need rollaway nest boxes. We have people all the time, I need rollaway nest boxes. If you need rollaway nest boxes, you have other problems. If you have to clean out your run, you got other problems. Um, so that is just, how many eggs are in there? There's a, a few. There's a few <laughs> eggs. There's got to be like a dozen eggs yeah. I saw. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and this time of year, you, I mean, I, I've been leaving mine in there a couple days before I collect them. Because the weather is perfect, slightly cool. All righty. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's got to be one o'clock. It's one o five. It's one o five. And if we have, let's finish up questions, answers. Um, they asked about the bedding in the nest box. Oh, of course. Yeah, they did. he's using the aspen bedding, and I brought some of the some of my coastal hay that I like. Just in case. So we the aspen bedding, that, yeah, so. the aspen bedding mats are great on the bottom, but I love the coastal hay for them to make a nest. So tell us about this coastal hay real quick. It was, why, it was why ten dollars for a whole bale, which I, it probably would have made, I don't know, forty nests or more. Why this for nesting material? Well, uh, I've been, I after we came to this coop before, I switched to the aspen bedding that he has, and the aspen bedding. I mean, if we can show what that really looks like here, let me grab it. So this this is very important. You, we're going to talk about nesting material. It's um, a mat. Huh? It's it's a mat. The aspen right. bedding is so a mat. It, it, yeah. it is a mat, and it's got like aspen on it, or like a. It's like, but so it's I don't know. So yeah, that, that, it looks like it needs to be changed out. But this is very easy to swap out. Ingrid and I were talking about how if you happen to have an accident in there, maybe an egg broke or somebody went in there to sleep and you've got to change this out because you don't want egg yolk on it and you don't want any poop on it. So it's just so easy to take this out or whatever pieces are soiled and add fresh back in there. Versus with the aspen adding, which it, it can work well and you should yeah. have, oh, here you go, he's got a brand new. Um, He's got a new one. Jimmy on oh, the that's spot. great. That's great. Um, so, you know, I, you know it, it, it's almost like it comes down to personal preferences. And I always say you Both should, of these products are fabulous. Yes. Both of these are. You shouldn't have to clean out your nest box, but things do happen. And if I, you get this, make sure you fluff it up. I didn't really know that. Yeah, we yeah. didn't know that either because you want them to want to make a nest. You and can actually pull this up and like twist it around like yeah, a nest. Yeah, I, I like using both, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah they're both great. I use both. I use that on the bottom just in case so nobody breaks an egg. Mm hmm. And then I and then just put this right on top. Yeah. Ingrid has spoken. You can, yeah, you can but you don't it. have to. You can use one or the other. Mm -hmm. But I love the coastal hay. Love it. And, it, and what, one of the reasons why we like all this is it encourages their instincts because they want to make a nest. And you'll even see them in there taking pieces with their beak and mm -hmm. turning it around, making a bowl. So that's what we're doing. It's just encouraging their instincts. We have a great comment from Laura. She said, you've given me hope to talk my husband into buying chickens. He always thought they were too much work. Oh, no. Let me talk to him. <laughs> it's all about the coop. It's all about the coop. If you have the right coop, the rest is easy. It's just that that's why we do this show. I want to prove it. I want to prove it, and that's why we take the time to do this show. Again, I always wish there was scratch and sniff video mm -hmm. um, to prove to people it doesn't smell. And a lot of people are like, I can't have chickens. I got predators. Everyone has predators. Um, number two is that they're like, well, I got to have a setback rule and it's going to be really close to their house. It's not a problem. Nope. It's not a problem at all. No, it's um, not. <laughs> all right. So let, let's wrap it up. Unless there's any other questions or comments coming up, I definitely would love to get to it. Uh, there are some things I want to talk about for upcoming shows. Um, somebody asked about the material on the egg hutch roof. If it's sharp or if kids can hurt themselves getting the eggs in. I'm actually so glad you, you brought that up because here's the deal. It is impossible 
to uh, prevent any accident from happening in the world, okay? Things can happen. And in our business with Coop Designing, there's pros and cons to everything. And metal serves a great purpose because we're reflecting the heat. It's all about keeping the hens cool in the summer. But metal can be sharp. You gotta be very, very careful. And what we have done is we use the metal roof on the egg hutch, which is critical. One, for aesthetics, but number two, keeping it cooler inside there. But it is down lower, and it needs to be down lower because you got to be able to have access to the eggs. And I love our egg hutch with that drop-down door because, as you just saw a couple minutes ago, even an a, a, a eight-year-old can go up and get the eggs, or if you're in a wheelchair, <laughs> um, or if you're seven foot tall. Um, but that brings the metal down low. Yes, I get it. Now, here's the thing. Metal is extremely sharp when you cut it and you have burrs. If you were to actually slide your finger on that right now, it won't cut you. It's very dull because there are no burrs. But if you go running 100 miles an hour into that metal, yeah, you could possibly get a gash. Here's the thing. I'm listening to you guys. I get it. I shoot for 100. And we have some things we're going to be doing with the new American Coupe rolling out soon along with all of our other Coupes. We have experimented with a lot of things to... Put your mind at ease when it comes to that lower edge of that A-cutch roof. Um, we've experimented with Plasti Dip. We've experimented with um, a rubber paint, which is kind of like Plasti Dip. And we've also ex experimented with that, what's it called, door trim? You yeah, remember there's that? there's some automotive trim that you can put on it. You can put on it, and I tell you, and that was a tip from a customer who said, you know, yeah. this is what you should do. We've done it, it doesn't stay on. And actually when it rains, it traps the moisture. So it looks good, it works well when it's on, but it doesn't stay on. So what I hope to do soon is get back to the application of dipping that end into some type of material that isn't gonna be very time consuming or very expensive, because that's the other thing. Mm -hmm. We're always making sure our, co our coops are very cost effective. And I tell you right now, it's that's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. I mean, I'm not gonna get into all that. I don't wanna talk about it. I don't even wanna think about it right now with fuel and lumber. It's, it's a nightmare. And I try everything to not raise our prices. I always say, if we can be smarter in-house and not raise our price, we're gonna do it for our customers. Either way, that's the idea. Um, also, a lot of times when we do the turnkeys, we will actually cut the corners and round them off just in case. And that's just another little tip. And I see Nan said something, so make sure we don't ignore that. You said um, applying anything to the edge of that roofing will void the warranty from the manufacturer. See, there you go. Technically speaking, <laughs> putting metal roof on a chicken coop null and voids it, but they're talking about factory farms where there's such a high level of ammonia, you could corrode the metal underneath. Not here. What if you put pool noodles on it? No, oh, that's not a bad idea. Put pool noodles on it. We've had customers do that in the past. It's not going to look the best, but if you have a child that's like, woo, and you're really worried about it, <laughs> um, that might be a good idea. I bet idea. you were that child. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, I, I don't know. Anyways, I mean so, the who? I forget to bring that up. And again, I appreciate whoever made that comment. We hear you and we will figure out a solution. And we're always, you know, thank God, knock on wood, we've never had an issue. That's right. Never had an issue. Um, and I hope I, did, I hope I didn't just jinx myself, but I don't ever want to have an issue. And I think the easiest solution is we can dip it, but there's already coatings on that metal roof that makes it so nothing sticks to it. So we would actually have to go in there and sand it so that material bonds to it. And that just adds way more labor. Okay. Do All you right. want to tease to next week's show? All right, show? so next week's show, we got two things potentially going on. And I think what we want to do is you're dying to do two things. Um, one was Kristen's brooder, because hers is so much better than my brooder. I have Kristen's brooder at my house, one of them. It's pretty And good. I'll admit, it's pretty slick. At least for the beginning. I'll, I'll get there. You go. I was or just gonna, I was maybe just, the, I was, the first step or I was just gonna the say makeshift. The, you come home with the with the baby chicks, and you're like, oh, I don't have, I'm not going to make Matt's brooder till the weekend. Okay, emergency brooder. Yeah. Love it. Um, number two, we have coming out very soon. I'm not sure where we're at with it. We're going to be doing the top, was it top 10 myths? That's right. Of backyard chicken keeping. And we're going to do a countdown from 10 to 1. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about that. You guys are going to love that. We're going to pick on the top 10 myths that we hear all the time, which are just simply not true, but so many people think they are true. Uh, number three, 
we tip we um, started talking about it here uh -huh. where are we gonna till or not till all right uh, I want to talk a lot about that and uh, we have a chance to team up with Kevin from Epic Gardening uh, if you guys been watching us we just did a beautiful coop for him out in San Diego and just a great person to talk to and I'm sure he's got some things to say but I just thought it'd be a lot of fun to really dive into that deeper uh, and then the fourth thing if I remember correctly Oh, it was just there, and I think I forgot it. There was four things coming up, and I don't remember them. Ah, just forgot it. Doesn't matter. Uh, so at least there's there's three coming up. There was something. Or is I, this because when I when I tell you you're doing number one, number two, and then you stop at number two, I said, yeah, you got to have three. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. So pay attention, uh, or you know, stay tuned. We will yeah. be having those shows. Or if coming you have up ideas, soon. if there's stuff that you want to see. Oh, absolutely, and I want to do more of this. I that that wasn't bad. Mm -mm. You know, no. packing up all the crap while we're still running a business. Get out here. Thank God it didn't rain. We almost weren't going to do the show today uh, because we weren't sure about the weather. And it was kind of cold. Boy, I tell you, down here we become soft when it comes to the yeah. cold. Oh, yeah. Um, it's gotten better. All right. Awesome, guys. Well, listen, okay. thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. We will see you next week.